Hello everybody, welcome back to the wood shop. In today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, wipe on polyurethane. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there that kind of tell you how to make your own, but I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on why you would want to use wipe on polyurethane and the pros and cons of using a wipe on polyurethane versus using a full strength polyurethane. So if you're interested in finding out more, stick around. So polyurethane comes in about in two forms normally. I mean, there's variations of that form, but you can get full strength and you can get the wipe on variety. And I don't think it comes as a surprise to many people that the wipe on polyurethane is literally just a thinned out version of regular polyurethane. The problem with wipe on polyurethane is it costs more than full strength and it's something that you can very easily make yourself and end up saving uh, more than 50% on the cost of regular wipe on. I will elaborate further on my recipe for wipe on polyurethane at the end of this video. So why would you want to use wipe on polyurethane over full strength polyurethane? So there, there are some pros and cons to each style. Uh, for wipe-on polyurethane, it is thinner, and so it penetrates deeper into the wood surface uh, as you're applying it. You can apply much thinner coats, and these thin coats dry quickly, so you will be able to add multiple coats in a day versus one or two coats a day that you'd be able to do with the full-strength polyurethane. On the flip side, those coats are very thin, so it does require several more coats for wipe-on polyurethane to be able to build up the same finish that you can do in fewer coats with full strength. However, with full strength polyurethane, it is thicker, and so it is more prone to showing brush strokes and bubbles in the finished surface Whereas the, the thin nature of the wipe on polyurethane and the way that you apply it virtually eliminates any possibility of getting bubbles and streaks in your finish. So just as the wipe on polyurethane takes several coats to build up a finish, you can get a good finish with full strength polyurethane in fewer coats. And I think it really, depending on how much time you can dedicate to a project, it pretty much evens out as far as the amount of time it takes to finish. My personal preference is to use wipe on polyurethane because it is foolproof. You can get a beautiful finish with even the poorest technique. Whereas when you're brushing on full strength, there is a learning curve and a, a technique that you probably need to develop in order to get the best possible finish. So I like wipe on, I can just wipe on a coat, forget about it for a couple hours, come back, uh, add another one and just kind of go along as I please. So the main benefit of making your own wipe on polyurethane is the money savings. You're buying the exact, whether you make it yourself or you buy it off the shelf, it's the exact same product. And one of the other benefits is you can tailor the recipe to your preferences. So generally you wanna keep the ratio of generally 50 to 25% dilution of the polyurethane. So that means you're either doing a one-to-one -one ratio um, all the way up to a three parts to one part ratio um, of polyurethane to mineral spirits. And I guess I haven't introduced the other key component here and that is I use mineral spirits for my recipe. And I feel like it does a really good job at thinning out the polyurethane and providing a very smooth flow across the surface of whatever project I'm working on. And so my preference is that one-to-one -one ratio and it's really easy. Um, I get these empty paint cans from my local Ace Hardware. Um, they're very handy for mixing. I have this guy right here. This was from my last video where I made um, my homemade Danish oil, which is another great um, cost savings project that you can do. And I guess I didn't explicitly discuss the cost. So as of December, 2023, 
I am able to get one quart of polyurethane for just under $11, and I can buy one quart of mineral spirits for just under $9, but I buy my mineral spirits by the gallon, and that gallon, you end up saving a whole lot of money if you buy it in larger quantities. So one can of the homemade polyurethane probably costs about, I would say, just under $20, whereas a can of wipe-on polyurethane costs about $25, and you're actually only getting about half, because if I buy a quart of full-strength poly and a quart of mineral spirits, I'll be able to make two quarts of wipe-on polyurethane. And so you're getting more than double the yield for um, less than what it would cost to buy just one can of pre-made wipe-on polyurethane. So enough talking, um, let's go ahead and get to mixing here. So this is a fresh can. I do not measure precisely, I just fill up the can to about halfway and then I top it off with the mineral spirits and that's good enough for me. One important thing to do before you combine the ingredients is you want to mix the polyurethane really well. It tends to settle and if you just pour off the top you're not going to get your full strength and it may mess with your ratio. So like I said I'm going to pour about half way up with the polyurethane and then I top it off with mineral spirits. And then you just stir it together. And really that's all there is to it. Now this can is reusable as long as you take good care of it. One thing that I like to do is inside the groove here where the lid goes, I like to punch a few holes. And what that does is it allows any excess polyurethane to drain back down inside the container. And it basically uh, keeps the lid from getting real sticky or really hard to um, open and close. I also do the same with really anything that's a finished product or my stain cans. I also do it for the same reason. I made a mess filming the thumbnail. Applying the finish is pretty straightforward. I grab a uh, microfiber and then I just dip it into the into the wiping polyurethane and I just wipe on my first coat like this. That first coat, you're always going to use a lot on the first coat because the wood's dry and it's going to soak it right up. So this coat is really just sealing the wood. Making it so the other coats will lay down a lot easier. You don't want to let it pool on the surface. It'll get sticky and it won't dry very fast. Just nice thin coats. They'll build up pretty quickly, especially since the wait time is usually between coats. You can wait usually like 15 minutes to a half an hour, depending on how you mixed your polyurethane. So I'll be able to come back and put another coat on pretty quickly. And really that's all there is to it. So what I like to do, my method is I put on three coats of the wipe on and then I will use 320 grit sandpaper just to lightly sand the surface and then I'll put a final coat on and that works for most decorative objects. Now if it is something that's going to take some abuse like a table or a desk, I will put three coats on, sand it, three more coats on, and then sand it one more time. And then on the surfaces of tables, what I like to do is I like to take a full strength polyurethane and make my final coat the full strength. And that just kind of ties it all together and makes a really thick, durable finish um, that will withstand children and dogs, which my house is full of, so I have to really try to make my stuff as bulletproof as possible. 
I really hope you found this helpful and I'm hoping that uh, it'll help you save a little bit of money when it comes to uh, choosing a finish for your projects. I've been making my own wipe on poly for years and it always just lays down a real perfect finish and I don't have to deal with bubbles and like uh, the dust and things that can get into full strength polyurethane. Um, and that final step of doing a light sanding and then putting one final coat on really just makes everything perfectly smooth and evens it all out. My preference for polyurethane is satin. I like satin. I don't really like the high gloss stuff, um, but you can do it with uh, gloss, satin, semi-gloss, any type that's out there. And you don't have to use Minwax either. You can do this with the Verathane and any of the other ones as long as it's oil-based. So once again, I, I really hope that this was helpful. If you uh, like this type of content, feel free to subscribe to my channel and be notified for any future videos that may come out. I want to thank you for watching all the way up to this point. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is for the thumbnail. Okay.